All right, so I wanted to do a couple of tutorials about the voice attack command system. So uh, voice attack itself is actually a voice activated control for PC games and apps. Uh, it works with the plenty of PC games. You can also use it for just desktop applications. Uh, it's really popular with games like Elite Dangerous and Star Citizen, mainly because you've got so much control over these ships. It's just it's crazy, uh, and it's also really hard to keep track of all the. Uh, key bindings for those options so uh, that's where voice attack comes in real handy uh, voice attack itself uh, you can download it it's a free trial version that includes a handful of uh, commands if you want to just give it a try there or you could purchase it for ten dollars uh, and they actually do a really good job of supporting it uh, definitely worth the ten dollars so here voice attack is just running on the desktop so I've got it muted right now but this is your standard interface you can actually uh, uh, collapse it down into a compact view um, so with it you can actually go through edit the profile here you can create a new profile export an existing uh, import someone else's or delete the profile and you can also turn on listening uh, keyboard shortcuts, mouse shortcuts, joysticks, or you could stop all commands. And then this wrench up here actually takes you to the voice attack options. Some of those you can set and mess around with. So um, we'll go ahead and open this up and get started on a first command. So right now, uh, this is a blank profile. I'm going to create a new command and we'll call this one walk forward. So, uh, this top section, when I say walk forward, uh, I want it to do something. So, I'll do a key press here, and just setting the key there, uh, I want to press and release the key uh, for 0 0.03 seconds. And then I'm going to give the command a description, so this again is just walk forward. And the category, we'll call this on foot so different controls there um, there are a lot of different options uh, you can have the command do so you can have the mouse move or click on something you can pause or you can have a variable pause based on a decimal so a simple pause that just says pause for however many seconds uh, and a variable pause you pass in a decimal and it'll pause for that amount of time so uh, that's useful if you want to hold for a specific duration uh, that might change based on other commands. So, um, In some of the other options, you could have voice attack actually execute another command. Uh, this one's really useful if you want to keep key bindings all similar. Uh, you could have it stop another command. Uh, that's a little bit more advanced. You could also stop all commands, switch to another profile, uh, ignore any unrecognized words or phrases, or a quick input, which is... I uh, kind of like typing real quickly. Uh, you could make a voice attack start or stop listening, enable shortcuts, uh, a whole bunch of options here. On sounds, you could have it say something from text-to-speech, stop that, play a sound or play a random sound out of a group of files, and then stop all sounds. Um, you could have Windows run an application or stop a process. Uh, there's a dictation mode that you can either start, stop, or clear the buffer. So as you're dictating, uh, it fills up that buffer. Uh, that's the information that's actually used. So uh, you pull that information in, you stop that, and you clear the buffer. Um, in the advanced, this is, a, this is a lot of the different variables that we'll be using. So a small integer, integer, uh, just different uh, variable types. Uh, you could clear saved values from the profile or have it write to a text file. Uh, you can also go into conditionals, so the if statements are uh, really helpful if you're going through and um, checking variables for particular states. So you can do if statements, put an else if, and add an else to the conditional block, and then end. Um, you can also start and end a loop, and uh, add a jump marker. Uh, it'll actually jump down to a specific point in the command. Um, and then, yeah, write a value to the event log. Uh, execute an external plugin or add a comment so um, those are all there and then recorder actually just plays back your key presses with uh, similar timing so here walk forward uh, we're just gonna have it press the W key um, and the we'll go ahead and give that a shot so close out of here turn listening on
walk forward. So there we go. Uh, it recognized the walk forward command. Uh, as you saw, it put the W key in there like we had expected it to. So one other thing we can do is we can actually make this recognize a few commands to do the same thing. So I could say either walk forward, um, I could also say move forward, or just forward. So uh, this semicolon actually indicates that uh, it could be either or uh, of those commands, and it'll recognize um, any of them. So we'll give that a try. Walk forward, move forward, forward. So with each of those three, uh, it recognized the command and it did something. So there's another way that we can actually write this, uh, probably a little bit more efficiently. So each of these has the word forward in it, right? We say something and then forward, or we just say nothing. So we can shorten it up by saying uh, we're going to take and add this square bracket in. So first of all, walk, uh, that'll do anything there. We can add a semicolon inside this square bracket. So anything uh, kind of like with uh, math, right, we have this uh, parentheses or this bracket. that It'll look for that thing first and then the second part. So walk, uh, move, or we can have a semicolon with nothing after it. And that says we don't actually need to have anything in this square brackets. It would recognize just the straight forward command. So go ahead and try that. Walk. Walk forward. Move forward. Forward. So um, it recognized each of those three again uh, with the new format.